landed on planet 412. I'll be your captain of sorts as we navigate this strange, cryptid-filled world. Join me on the quest for truth through the strange, mysterious, and supernatural. This is Planet 412. And welcome to Planet 412. I see a lot of people are here already. We have 19 people in the chat. I wanted to thank you guys for coming to an impromptu uh, Planet 412 tonight. Um, you know, we have somebody on the show tonight, Brother Heck. Uh, a lot of people know uh, Hector, and he is uh, somebody, a big supporter of, of this channel and of a lot of other channels. And he has had an incredible experience, a horrifying experience um, that we want people to hear that. Let me turn down the volume here on my phone real quick. Um, on the El Galapote, I think is how you pronounce it. And if I'm tearing that up, I apologize. Uh, and he had this really happen and it's gonna be fun and terrifying. and. This will be the first time that uh, he has ever spoke about this uh, on American uh, TV and or YouTube, the Internet. But I wanted to say hello to the people. I see Lyson Fire Fear here, Joseph Gross, Glenn Dannison. Uh, let's see who else we got in here. Let me go up. Uh, DJ Tyler. Hey, what's up, Tyler? Uh, Dillion Canepa, uh, there's going to be some, some family of his, I'm sure, Paula Hawk, um, let's see, Poncho Zort, Paul Coca, now if I pronounce your names wrong, I apologize, Paul Kokorotisis, Crystal, what's up, um, my wife, Stacy, Poncho, Zorch, Amy Creel, Tammy, the Truth Walker, Audacious Amber. Uh, and I wanted to give a little love real quick because we have the first time ever uh, on Planet 412, we have a Patreon member, and that is Pamela Stefanich, who is our first. Planet 412 member on Patreon. She has been a big supporter of me since she told me, since he saw my interview um, all the way back on, I believe it was the confessionals with Tony Merkel. And that was one of the first uh, interviews I've ever done. Encrypted Creatures was the first with uh, Todd Erie and Brian Brock. And then I did a couple others. Um, so I wanted to thank Pamela Stefanich for being that. And I wanted to real quick just run down our members. Uh, Two Shadows, Numa462, Carol, Smurphy, Dwight Baldwin, Moonshine, NC, Sasquatchers, JC Sasquatchers, Sue Gee, Brother Heck, Liber13, Karen Root, Pamela Stefanich is also a man member there. Danita Whitson, Regina Parton, Josh Turner, Katerina, Poncho Zorch, John Black Rose, Just Curious, Mr. G Rides, Gregory, Kevin Murphy, Al, who was one of our buddies from across the pond, Squirrel Pros, Starshine and Crystals, Goldie Bell, Cardi L, Holly Mangum, and Truth Walker, who is Tammy. Uh, and she is a level three. Uh, Tammy is a gigantic supporter of this channel. She has been a level three member since we started, and she has helped me more times than I can point out. And I can't thank her enough for what she does. Every single one of you guys have, and all of you guys that are here right now, Bristol and everybody else. So thank you for being here. Um, just to let everybody know that's watching on pilled.com uh, and uh, or pilled.net and rumble.com. Hello. Uh, thank you for being here. 
And, um, you know, we're going to get started. We're going to bring Brother Heck in. And uh, after the show is over, I'll talk about a couple other things. But let's bring Brother Heck in. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Is my audio okay? Yeah, everybody's doing well. We've got 35 people here right now, and everybody is uh, biting at the bit to hear you talk. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, well, people don't know me. Um, my name's Hep Heck. That goes Brother Heck. Um, I'm from Dominican descent. I was born in New York, but I was uh, raised in, uh, I mean, my family's from Dominican Republic, both parents, but I was raised here. So I'm like the best of both worlds. Um, to start my story off, this happened about five, six years ago. I went on vacation to a resort and I went to the city of Puerto Plata. It's that's near like Santo Domingo, which is the capital. And in the resort, you know, at this time, to give a little bit of back context, I was also dabbling in the occult, which is like the native voodoo um, religion of the American Republic. It's called 21 Divisions. A lot of people don't know that. It's not as glamorized as the Haitian part, but it's actually older than the Haitian part. It's it's very similar, just that some, some of the names of the spirits are Spanish instead of Haitian, vice versa. Um, so, I went to this uh, resort and I was looking to get consulted by someone in this religion in that country because in this particular religion, the way to get consulted is that the the priest is called a, a, a caballo, which is a horse, meaning they have to get mounted. And you typically can't find those kind of people out here in America because they're in rural places and stuff like that. And in this particular religion, um, the spirits have to choose you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can't just Google something and light a candle or something. It doesn't, I mean, you could try, but you're going to get something that's not what you intended to be. Uh, so I went f with that particular goal in mind. And surprisingly, I was, uh, I went outside, like the resort is like enclosed, but like on the outskirts is like a, like a shopping district. And I went to go buy something. I can't remember what it was exactly. And there was a, a a guy on a bike uh, on a on a motorcycle. And in that country, instead of taxis, you have guys on bikes, and they offer you to take you places. And I asked the guy, "Hey, do you know where I could get consulted at?" And this guy, "Yeah, sure. I, I'm I, I know a guy. Let's go go whatever." So I just go with the intention of meeting the guy. I didn't go with the intention of doing any kind of thing. I just wanted to get a reading about something because I had something particular that was going on, and I wanted to inquire about it. And with these kind of people, in my experience in general, you don't want to ever give them any details for them to cold read you or whatever. So I went and I met a, a Haitian guy. I think he was like playing, uh, he was uh, playing, uh, I was in like an, a, a rooster fight place. Like, so he was like one of those places. So he's like a regular looking guy, young my age. He's like, oh yeah, I know. And, I, and I'm quizzing him on knowledge about, about the religion because I know about it. So I, wanted, I don't want to, you know, waste my time with someone who's a, a scammer or something right so i read him out and i i read him out and i saw you know okay this guy more or less knows what he's doing and he's like okay l let me uh let me bring you to my place of business my altar i'm not thinking this is like gonna be far i'm thinking i'm gonna go across the street so so that guy gets on a bike and then my taxi driver gets on a bike and then they get on the highway and they're driving for like 20 minutes but now I'm in too deep. I'm like, where the hell is this guy taking me? You know, like, I'm like, fuck. It. He, then he takes me to like, I say the middle of nowhere because I'm from New York, but it basically was the middle of nowhere. It was like a, a place just like no farmland. It was just like a little hut with like, uh, with like a, a fence post around it. And this place was just used to have his altar and stuff. Cause these, cause if it's a real place, they have to have a situated place in order for the spirits to congregate or whatever. And normally these people, the Kabaji, also have a helper with them. And the helper is because when the guy gets gets mounted, it's not him talking. It's somebody else. So basically when he gets unmounted, he won't remember whatever he told you. So so the helper has to remind him like what the spirit said. Because if the spirit said, oh, he has to pay $500 and then he gets unpossessed, I could just tell him, oh, the spirit told me $100, you know? So he has to have someone confirm. This is how you know if it's legit or not. Because if it's not legit, the guy won't, won't not remember, right? 
Right. So anyway, so uh, so the guy, um, so this particular guy, his spirit was Baron, Baron, uh, <laughs> I forgot, um, uh, 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 criminal like a criminal okay. and this is like the patron this is like the patron saints of assassins and stuff like that and like if, if you look up i'm telling you guys names so you can look it up you know because trust me if you, you look it up try to do well can i interrupt you for one second yeah. um and i yeah. apologize for interrupting so just to let everybody know i just wanted to let the ones that aren't because we jumped right in it so I want to let everybody know, and if you and if there's whatever you need to add, uh, I want you to add it. First, there's a que quick question someone is asking, and you don't need to go into detail. Are you still involved in the voodoo? No, I'm a born again Christian. Thanks, thanks to Jesus, okay. Lord and Christ. And I, I could explain how I got out of it too, because I had to, another another encounter that made me stop, but we'll okay. get there when we get there. And we will definitely get there. So what I wanted to do to let everybody know what a Gal El Galapote is, and it's also called an El Lugaru, which a lot of you know what Rugarus are. El Galapote is a dog-like creature, or El Lugaru, or El Zengano, are flying creatures. The legend says that they are men who can change into animals and then back to human form at will. So very similar to what we're familiar with, like skinwalkers, I would assume, yes? Yeah, I just want to add a little tidbit. Uh, a sangano is a, a completely different cr creature. It's, it, it's, um, it's uh, they mix it in, but a sangano is particularly remains in human form, and his ability is is kind of sounds kind of weird, but he's able to travel large distances depending on the bodies of water that are nearby. So, for example, if he takes one step, he'll end up in a different river, like in a different city. That's how he travels. So it's like right. a, a guy that can travel really fast through like really large distances, and they're normally associated with a. Uh, with flying witches, because uh, there's certain things that they could do that flying witches can't. So sometimes they're in leagues, they're in, they're like in league with each other, and they're sometimes in league with Galipotes, but they're all separate actual things with separate packs you have to do. And it's not as an intense of a pact as a Galipote because they don't actually transform into any kind of animal. Gotcha. Okay, well then let's jump back into, uh, uh, let's see some, well, people, you had, you, so you had mentioned someone is asking right now, you had said teleportation. Did you real quick want to just, um, you know, mention what you mean by teleportation? The best way I I've never actually seen it. And I don't think no one can actually physically see it because if, if a guy could jump from uh, each river to each river, you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, but, mm. but the, it, it from what I've understood, like people who have seen it see it as a guy that's really tall. So each time his leg steps out, the, the next place he lands is a different river. Oh, okay. Kind of like Nightcrawler from the X Men. He's teleporting. Yeah. So, so I don't know if he's flying in the air, or he's teleporting, or he's just giving the illusion that he's walking, but something's going on where he's transporting, and it's only from river to river. He can't go from. From, from mountain to mountain or, or street to street is river to river. Okay, it sounds sounds to me like he's opening some type of portal and maybe it's places that can only be connected with water or things that he's seen, which again would be connected to some of the teleportation uh, beings that, you know, stories out there that they have to know where they're going before they can do it or have places of familiarity. Getting back into where you were, um, so you were you had gone to this one place, and what what happened next? All right. So the guy's dressed in regular clothes at first. He's like, all right. He leaves me with his a helper, his attendant. Also, my cab driver, for, for lack of a better word, is also there because he's gonna, he's gonna take me back. And mind you, I have I don't have money on me, so I have no intention. Had no intention to do whatever, but now I'm in too deep. So I'm so, I, and and this is what I learned is that they rope you in, they take you to a place when they're we're forcing you to like do something and you can't back out. You know what I mean? Uh, I was naive back then, but but hindsight being 2020, that's what what they were doing. 
Uh, so, so he takes me to his his place. So he comes back. He's dressed in um a red silk robe with a a kind of ha a a big hat like a sombrero hat, right? And he takes a swig of white rum. He lights some candles, says some kind of incantations, and then he gets he gets mounted, quote unquote. But you know, and his voice changes. But in my mind, I'm still being naive. Like, all right, this guy, you know, he could be faking all this, whatever. And I think like since since now I know he wasn't faking it, I think the spirit knew that I could have thought he was faking it. So the first thing that he says that he mentions the two names of the roommates I live with. And I never had mentioned these people to him or the cab driver or anyone. So he couldn't use, and I won't, I'll reserve their name, but let's call them A and J. A and J. It was a, my friend and his female, uh, his, his girlfriend, which I was having problems in that living situation anyway. And he told me, oh, ma, who's, who's A and who's J? You're having pro problems with them. And I was uh, uh, taken aback. And I was like, yeah, I'm, uh, those are my roommates after he mentioned them by name. And they're really like unique names. So it was not like Bob and Robert. Even if there was, it doesn't matter. So this proved to me that this guy has some kind of power working with him. So he's telling me, and and to, and also the spirit is actually like a real, uh, he's real funny and cordial. He's not like scary or nothing. He's like a, like, like a jokester kind of guy. He's talking real casual, okay. real calm. And he, and he tells me, he's like, oh yeah, um, uh, is that this, his girlfriend put some, some roots on you and that's why your life is going to shit. But I could fix it for you if you want. And hindsight being 2020, I'm not sure if this was true or not, but, but since he mentioned their names, I used to get a face value, but looking back at it, since I know that demons and stuff are liars, he could have just been telling me a lie, mixing it with the truth in order to compromise me to do something. Right. Uh, so, so he asked me what you want me to do. And I said, well, what can you do? He's like, he's like, he, he tells me in a casual voice, we could do whatever you want. We could kill her. We could do whatever. And I'm like, and I'm like, Hey, slow down. I don't want no one to kill anybody. And I was like, and I, and I was like, I was like, I, what I want you to do is return back to sender. Just take this away from me. And he's like, okay, I could do that. So then now I go about how he does it. He, I, and I believe I showed you a brace. Remember I showed you, I sent you a, face, a picture of a bracelet. Matt? Yes, sir. Remember I sent you a picture of a bracelet that was made out of cloth? I do. I do. Yeah, so that was the bracelet that he made for me as a as a you protection. Know, I'm, trying to look. I'm gonna try and find it on my on my phone and see if I could get it up. But um you wanna explain it real quick, like what the meaning of that would be for? Brother Heck. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, the mic got muted for a second. Could you explain to them, um, you know, what the bracelet is, is like what we're yeah, yeah. made of? And yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 could, I could get into detail of it. It's, it's called a resguardo. Resguardo in Spanish means like a protection. And there's different kind of protections that you could get. Um, most of the heavy duty ones are ones that you swallow and they like are infused with like some kind of demonic energy and they like uh stop you from getting stabbed or people could shoot at you and they'll miss or you could get stabbed and like it's like real heavy duty stuff right okay. uh, i don't know if mine had the ability to do that actually i've never been in that situation uh but um uh, but mine was just one like a a piece of cloth a piece of it was thread but the way he made it was almost supernatural in his way because he took three uh sewing sewing cloths and he tied them like at rapid speed and he made this like in like in a minute and a half and it fit perfectly in my hand like it, it, it was something that like he would need a lot of practice to do it wasn't like something normal like someone could do it was like he took three pieces of cloth and he was tying them so rapidly that he made a bracelet that fit in my hand exactly which it was it was made of purple black and white I sent you the picture. He told me this will protect you until it falls off because it, it wasn't made to be permanent. He was like, whatever. But, but that wasn't what uh, would wow. cleanse me. <laughs> that was just like an added bonus for me. He was like, he's like, hey, I'm going to give you this because you, you're a cool guy or whatever. So I was like, okay, whatever. So now he tells me, all right, so now what you want me to do about this other thing? But, but then he first 
But then he goes first. We gotta talk about price, cause you know this is gonna cost you. He, he I think he mentioned like five hundred and twelve dollars. Like it was, it was like a real specific amount of money. And I told the guy flat out, I was like, bro, I don't have that money on me right now. But at this point, I'm I'm scared because I'm in a place I never been at. And if I don't give this guy money or tell this guy something good, I, I'm not afraid at this point of anything spiritual happening. I'm, I'm afraid of something physical happening to me because I don't I don't really know these guys. The only thing that's right. kind of given me and, and people would ask, Hector, why would you even do this? Well, first of all, in the hotels I'm at, all the cab drivers are known by the hotel. So there's like a non-written rule that you don't hurt tourists. So if something would happen to me, they would know which cab driver I was with. So it's in the best best interest of the cab driver that I don't get hurt because American citizens who get hurt in Dominican Republic are bad for business and the military will come down and like just punish anybody. So no one's really stupid enough to actually hurt an American, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, but, but, but either way, you know, it's still dangerous, but that, that was kind of what led me to do that. So I'm explaining to the guy and I was real, I was real pragmatic about it. I was like, look, I get paid every two weeks. I could pay you on this date and blah, blah, blah. So he was like, all right, you sure? He's like, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, and then, and then later on, I, I, yeah, then, but that's it. That, that's the, the bracelet. Yeah, that was the bracelet, everybody. I didn't mean, I didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry, brother. Oh yeah. And you also show them I had sent, but before I was, uh, I, I had altars and whatever. Of, of if I was involved, so yeah. You... yeah, I'll get that up for you while you're talking. Um, and even and in those said altars, you could see like a, some a, a a pink and a green aura that that I didn't put in the video that just comes up, and that's the auras of the said spirit that I had in the room. Uh, so yes, so what he does is this is where it gets spooky, where everyone's waiting for. He starts. Uh, he has a, a broken Heineken glasses on the floor. And he starts smashing them with his foot. Like really, really hard and not bleeding. And I'm like right next to him. So I know it's not a parlor trick. And I'm like, okay. But then he starts blowing smoke and saying something and drawing something. And then he tells me, yeah, my, 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 you, can hit, my, my, you can hit play so they can see it. It's not playing yet, brother. Oh, yeah, it is not, I think. Okay, there we go. Hold on. I'll show you the... Let me rewind it for you. I don't want to show anything else. And, okay, here you go, everybody. That's what the table looked like. That's the table he's referring to, the red table with the handle and some cards on it. Yeah, that was a uh, two. I, I I could further explain that when I'm done with this, if people want to know. Yeah, for sure. uh, and to let you guys know, any names that I divulge in it, don't try to experiment with what I do because you have to have certain uh, you have to have certain uh, initiations to even be able to access have have legal right to talk to these spirits. So I wouldn't suggest it, even if you are dabbled in the occult. If you're not in the same because it's by bloodline it's not it's, it's going to end up badly for you so don't try definitely not something they want to get involved with for fun so to speak it's not a ouija board and ouija boards by the way are not toys either everybody yeah definitely so yeah sorry no, so so yeah when uh so when um, uh, the guy does this, right, he tells me, oh, and make sure you pay me on the 12th. Let's say it was, I can't remember what date it was, but it was like a month and a head because he knows I'm going to leave the country in a month. So, so, and by the guy, I'm not really talking to the guy because it's not really, it's not really the guy talking to me. It's, it's whatever's working through him that's talking to me. Mm -hmm. So he, so, so he, he, so he was like, <laughs> um, uh, let me just, I don't think I have to show you something, but since like, I think, since, since I believe these things know things about people, he probably knew that I was second guessing, not the process, but like, what if I try to rip them off or something? So he right. needed a, he needed a cement in my mind. Like you really don't want to try to rip me off. Uh, 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 so, so what this guy proceeds to do is I'm looking at him, his face, 
starts to morph and elongate. And he doesn't completely transform into like a full-on werewolf. And then I could explain, I, I, I could explain how I learned why he did it. Oh, but basically it was just like the top part of his face. Have you seen like the like like the howling? Yeah. So so he grew a muzzle, he grew hair, and he and he transformed like halfway just enough for me to see. And then, then he and then he smiled at me. And then he transformed back. And, and then from there, huh? How did you feel when when you I, saw his face change? I mean, th there's a saying in 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 the culture. Um, uh, how you call it? Basically, I, I was showing him that I wasn't that scared because there's a um. I wouldn't say myth. I believe it's true, but there's some places that you say if you see something and you get too scared or vomit, that they could eat you. Especially like in Haiti, they do that. Like for example, there's this thing in Haiti that like if you they, they, they feed you a uh because in Haiti a lot of these things uh they eat they eat uh flesh as out of humans, so sometimes mm -hmm. they'll offer you human flesh and tell you it's human, and if you don't eat it, guess what? Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be the next meal, so you have to eat it. I so luckily so. I wasn't in that situation. So so when he transformed, I was scared. And he saw I was visibly scared, but I wasn't crying or shaking or enough. And he I was just in a sick because I remind you, I'm also part of this lifestyle too. So I can't show them I'm that scared. So I had to show them, all right, I get your point, whatever, you got it. And um uh, and 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 when that date came about, I made sure I sent him the money. So whatever he did did work for me to, you know. Make sure I send the money. Gosh, oh, I would assume so. Um, Lice and Fire Fear has a question. You had mentioned the spirits. What spirits do you do you assume that he was speaking of? Demons? Uh, you know, wh who who exactly was he referring to? Well, I could tell you exactly who he, he's referring to. Um, uh, it, it was the spirit I mentioned earlier, uh, Lord, Lord, uh, 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 and excuse me, I stutter and, and it's difficult for me to say the, the, no the case. No apology. No, it's just for not anybody wondering. Um, and the way this works is that each, each person has if you're messing with a legit person, uh, each priest, as you would call them, or like a hongang or a bokor, they normally have one main spirit they work with. So if you ever meet someone who tells you, oh, I work with every single spirit, they're BSing you because spirits and demons don't work like that. They like to have ultimate possession of said things. And some spirits are better for other things, hence why they have certain, uh, certain uh, uh, areas of expertise. So this this said spirit was, was said of assassins and criminals. So this is the spirit he was directly working with, right? And then that spirit is also has a Catholic saint. So all these guys, they have Catholic saints, but it's not that Catholic saint that's a spirit. It's that's that spirit. So let's say the the Baron Criminal, his 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 spirit, his saint was a uh, a uh, saint. Ever seen that saint that has like a mouse and a cat and like a thing like next to him and they're eating all out of the same bowl? He's like a dark skinned individual. Um, you mean Tom and Jerry? No, no. <laughs> there's an actual saint like who dresses a priest and next to him. Oh, oh, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I heard you said a, a mouse and a cat. Um, you know, no, but no. In, the, in, in, the, in the image of that saint, they have a mice and a cat and a whole bunch of animals that normally would be fighting each other, all eating out of the same bowl. Because this was like I the. Do. the cause it, I do. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? I want to ask you one quick question. We've had we we've had a number of people jump in, and would you just do me one big favor, uh, brother Heck? Because if you're just if you're just jumping on everybody, I just wanted to give you a super quick update. This is where we are in the story. Could you just like give us a quick, you know, real quick rundown of where we went through? So you had this happen, and you went to see this man because. 
Yeah, I went to I see this man because I, exactly where I, you were. I was in the I was in Dominican I was in the, the Dominican Republic of the city of of the city of Puerto Plata, which is a city out there that has a lot of resorts and also has a lot of locals and stuff. So this guy was around there. I went to get a consultation, not expecting to see a shapeshifter or being told I had a curse on me. I just wanted a general like reading, like you go to a tarot card, but I just wanted it from on, a, on, a, on an authentic source. But I guess, you know, what they say, um, uh, if, you, if you ask for the devil, he's gonna, he's gonna show up. So, so yeah, so then I saw the guy and then, and then, and then also prior to me seeing the guy shape shift halfway and, and that situation ended when I was going back in the, in the cat, in the taxi cab, there was this black dog that was chasing my car and he was barking at the car and he was looking at me and he seemed to, you ever seen like the, the dog smile? Like, a, yeah. Yeah, so the dog was like barking at me, running, smiling, like, and then I got like the impression, like, hey, this is this is me again. I'm reminding you, I didn't forget. That is and also, horrible. and also, I don't I don't know if it was the same guy or or whatever because Galipotus because oh they they could also transform into actual animals like fully on, like like actual dogs, or they could be like uh like halfway like you know dog man and the typical things like that hey brother i want to ask you is this the picture that you're referring to no uh i think it's saint de pojres okay p-o-r-p-o-r-r-e-s p-o-o -E no, P-O-R-R-E-S. P-O-R-R-E-S painting. He's a Catholic saint. And it's a painting of animals eating out of the same bowl. Yeah, an actual guy, uh, actual guy next to him, which is the saint. Okay, um, so... This is where we are. This dog chased the car. It definitely gave you the feeling that this was that person basically saying, hey, bro, you know, I know where you're going. You need to pay me. What happened after that? Oh, then after that, you know, after that, you know, I went back to New York. I paid the guy. And, and then funny, luckily enough, when I did pay the guy, the issue I want to resolve did get resolved because I, I I moved into a place a new place which which was cheaper than the one I was living with now, so and it happened like a two week span so it did work you know so wow. he did hold the, he did he, he did hold up his his end of the bargain and 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 the funny part when when I thought and this new guy that I lived with was also a practitioner which I didn't know. Because like because because he had a Saint Michael on his door with a certain image, but I knew what that image meant because there was, it was something added to it. So so it, it, so the also, that's the, the, that's him. That, yeah, that that's him. Okay, so this this is how do you pronounce his name again, Hector? I think Saint de Pojres or something like that. I think he's from like from like. You can see there's a, a dog and a cat and a and a and a duck. I think and a mouse. That's, a, yeah. that's actually a really cool picture. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, you're back in the United States. It had fixed itself. What did you so you you sent him the rest of the money? I assume. Yeah. And what occurred after this? Did anything else happen? Um. After. This is where we go about how I broke off the situation about what I was doing when I had those two altars and whatnot. Right, right. Thank you. Yeah, and also I'm gonna give, give you some backstory about those two altars. The, the in in the folklore of of the of the of the the altars, the, it's a uh, there are two saints. Uh, it's the Black Madonna, right, and it's also another saint which. 
I forget because a lot of these names are in Spanish, but uh, it's a, it's a, also another female saint that has a lot of uh, jewelry on and 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 and, and a knife in her heart. And and the Black Madonna has a a knife wound on her face. So the story is that they're both sisters, and one slashed one in the face, and the other stabbed the other in the heart. And you have to serve both of them, but they can't be together in the same altar. Gotcha. And 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 the one with the jewels that that had the what the pink or white cloth, I believe that's like the that's the spirit of love, money vanity stuff like that so like an aphrodite kind of spirit you know uh other than that that her, that her sister counterpart is more for like single mothers orphans like a protector of the innocent and things of that nature so you have to serve so so i had and i and i also had the third one which was the actual entity that transformed into a dog but i wasn't allowed to have a picture of him I had because I because because I asked the guy, okay, what do I have to do when I go home? And this is what he told me: you can have these two altars up, and you can have mine up, but don't put a picture of me. Just put a plate on the corner with like some coins and a candle and some other miscellaneous things. But that mm -hmm. that's, that that was was his thing. Hey, uh, uh, brother Heck, I want to ask you real quick before you move on. Don't forget that where you are, Lyson Firefear has another quick important question. He wanted to know, or he, I apologize. I, I'm not sure if Lyson, if you're a man or a woman, I'm not sure. Um, if the transformation of the face was physical, was it more like an illusion? Did you actually notice like bones and everything moving in the face? Or was it more like, you know, like watching TV and it just kind of was like light shifting and then all of a sudden it was, it was there and like i apologize you're a man thank you uh i was right next to it you know i don't think anyone in my particular situation was gonna go and grab and touch it to see if it was you know an illusion or not but i did see the actual face structure move and things of that nature occur and then when it changed back it slowly changed back it wasn't like it just instantly, like, instantly like, changed back. Uh, knowing, like you said before, kind of like in the yeah. movie. You yeah, and, and, then, and then I could explain this after further research, which I found out about how they both did. Yeah. At least in my culture, which makes a lot of sense, is that these beings, in order to fully transform, it cost them things. So it, it, it costs them like months off their lives or years, or that's why they can't just transform every time they feel like transforming. So that they'll only transform for a good reason. So it would make sense that he's not going to transform into a full on thing in order, in order to just scare me. Ah, I see. And that also makes a lot of sense because if people just had this power to transform whatever they wanted, the, it, 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 this world would be chaos. Everybody would just be like an X-Men. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Uh, so I think that's also like a law that's in place for this not to work. In order, and in, now I want to get into the 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 lore and the things that I've known that I know that people don't know. In order to be these things, it's similar to a skinwalker, where you have to sacrifice. Like, doesn't particularly have to be someone you someone you love per se, but, but you have to something of sacrifice has to be given. So it has to be a blood sacrifice, and as well, you have to also have to be part of the religion. So it can't just be a random guy. Like I want to be a skinwalker or galipote. Like no, you like it's like uh, it's, it's it's like a level. It's like a level of like voodoo doctor kind of thing. It's not like the regular kind of thing. And from what I've heard, that this knowledge is not as easily available as it once was in like fifties and sixties. Because remember, when there was no internet, you know. This was more popular because people use this in order to live. You know, they spied on people. They stole people's cattle. Uh, the, 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 the people wanted to be sanguined for a reason so they could go. Also, they also linked up with witches who like suck the energy of babies. But sometimes these witches couldn't gain access in order to certain people's homes. So they would hire so they inherit this in a way. It's they inherit the powers that they get in a way. Yeah, they they make a blood pact in order to okay. get these powers. Gotcha. It's it's all it's all the same with the sangano, with the galipote, or with the or, 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 or with the witch bruja. 
Okay. And, okay. and um, uh, yeah, these guys, I know these guys, but they're real because I seen one, it transformed like in front of me and they didn't transform fully because it wasn't going to waste his time in my opinion, you know, or maybe it was just, the, it was just the, the demon just wanted to F with me, but I did see it, you know, uh, but then also I, I think I'm, uh, I stopped saying my story about, about why I stopped. So I had these two altars, the, 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 the two sisters, whatever. And then I had this dream. And in this dream, there was this blindfolded uh, dark-skinned man who was reading tarot cards or something. He tells me, oh, um, uh, your mother is getting in the way. We, we have to get rid of her. And you have to pay us a thousand something dollars to do it. So I'm like, wait, you guys are telling me I have to get rid of my mother and I have to pay you guys? Uh, so I was like, you guys are crazy. And this is all happening in, in, in the dream. Right. So, so I rebuke it uh, in the name of Jesus and it burns up the, 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 the guy. And then I wake up and when I wake up, I'm pissed because I, I look at my altars and the whole reason I give these, these, these spirits what they want is for them to protect me. So in my eyes, I saw that, why am I serving something that's not protecting me? If you're allowing other pe other entities to mess with me, or it could have been you guys all along, I don't know. But either way, I was pissed. Uh, Cause it's one thing you don't do is threaten my family. You can threaten me all you want, don't threaten my family. So what I did was I I, I just, I, tra I trashed the altars like right there. And that's like a big no, no. That's something you don't do. If, if you ask anyone who's part of the religion, they'll be surprised. Oh, how I'm still alive. Uh, so I trashed the altars, but in that same night, when I did that, something came to me in my sleep, like sleep paralysis, and it, it, it tried to suck the air out of me because my blanket was over my face tightly, like something was trying to suffocate me. And, and I, was, I was dying. And then I remember me whispering, uh, oh, Jesus, um, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, don't let me die like this. Don't let me die like this. I repeated that three times. And then it stopped and let go. Then from there on, I got rid of all my stuff and I went deeper into, the, into being a Christian. Shows you which God is more powerful in this realm and any realm. Yeah, that's very powerful. I, now, did you actually feel like hands on you or was it just the blanket itself? Like it was just sucked down onto you like something. Yeah, it, it was a blanket like tightly on my like Like if I put a blanket and I put it around your mouth with pressure, so it wasn't just a blanket resting on my face. It was literally a tight blanket over my mouth. And then on top of that, I felt my breath like leaving me on top of that. And I could barely, the words, I could barely even say the words that, that I said. I was using my last breath in order to say those words. Pretty powerful. Wow. Uh, I think that's been, a lot. And, and then I literally thought I was, I literally thought I was going to die. So I was saying my, my last death, deathbed prayer in my mind, like, the moment I died. And, and, and then, I, and then I got the impression that whatever was doing it was kind of like, annoyed that I invoked the name of Jesus. So it's like, let go. Like, all right, I have to leave now. Uh, Madeline Chap had made a, a, a uh, message that trashing altars like that can bring about a lot of bad things. And I was just going to type out just like uh, destroying Ouija boards and utilizing those and then not closing them up correctly can bring in uh, really bad things and keep things there. And since we have a break here to let everybody know, Brother Heck has a GoFundMe. Uh, he's fighting cancer and he, you know, is, is uh, you know, doing his best like, like everyone else to make it through this world. And if you guys can find it you know, in your hearts to, to help him out, uh, that, 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 right there go fund me uh, address is available i'm about to throw up a uh a running ticker with a very short one on there that you can take a picture of where you can uh you can drop in and my wife will drop it in the chat um that one right there is very short that'll take you to brother heck go fund me and uh you know we wish we wish you the best Brother, we we uh, pray for you and hope that you're going to be okay. Yeah, and also I want to uh, thank you for that. And also wanted to ask, 
because I know this is going to come up because it came up before. So I want to ask me, I think you asked me this, but you, you weren't the only one. You're like, do, do, do you think that my involvement in this caused my cancer later on down the line? Mm -hmm. I don't think that particular thing caused it. And I don't think it helped it either. But why, why I don't think it caused it, because a lot of people don't know is that my older sister also has breast cancer and my other sister had cancer as well. But I believe this was a gener I believe this was a generational curse due to my father's side of the family and this passed this passed down his bloodline. Why do you think that? I believe that because I could go into a, a, a different story, but I won't be too long winded because <laughs> that's another show in itself. But my father, but my father cheated on my mother with the mistress, and that and that mistress was. A, a, a practitioner of the occult and okay. she had cursed my and she had cursed my mother while she was pregnant with me and that that led me to have a lot of old hag appearances and stuff like that which i was tortured as a child which you know kind of led me in led me into the path the path that i was on previously and also also a lot of these things um uh, i don't know who in my in my grandfather's heritage because remember if you go back 80 years, everybody in my country was involved in one way or the other. And it only takes one person to, to carry down said curse. So someone in my, in my past could have made some kind of pact and then it kind of got, and then that pact was not remembered by anybody else, but it kept going down the line. And I find it odd that all three of my siblings have had three different types of cancers. Oh, wow. Okay. It, you, you know, and my sisters were never involved in anything like I was to my knowledge. Well, you definitely uh, have done your part. I mean, you know a, a lot of the specifics and if you're going to get through them, um, you know, that that is uh, definitely how to know how to do it is is powerful. Uh, Twirl Pros wants to ask you a question you, you had mentioned that you found Christianity and don't do voodoo anymore, but how did you get out of doing it? How specifically did you get out of it? Well, I want to say I was, uh, oh. how you say, um, uh, someone who was a Christian and stopped being a Christian, I, I, there's a word for it, but I, I can't remember it. Because I got baptized as a Christian. I was, I was raised Catholic, and then my mother converted, and I became a Christian, and I, and I got baptized at 12. So, so I believe I was sealed at that point, but I just went astray and started practice, started looking for foreign gods, like many people in the Bible have done. So, and, and it's funny, it's it's funny because um, when I was seeing that uh, that guy who transformed into a a, a godly bote, um, yeah, he told me, oh, that I have a good heart. So the demon was telling me, yo, you have a good heart, but he couldn't flat out just tell me, you know, I'm marked by God or something. But I guess he still had to acknowledge I had some had something special about me, despite me going to there. And I didn't, you know, he offered me to get revenge on the supposed person who cursed me. And I said, no, I, I didn't have it in my heart, even though some people may say I had the right, you know what I mean? Because things were going bad in my life. But I said, no, just just get rid of it. I don't want them to get hurt or whatever. So I think also my intention also saved me from a lot because, you know, if you have a, a bad intention to do things, you know, it's going to fall back right on you. Uh, so, but, but the way that I really got, I, I really got rid of it was, it, it, it's not going to sound practical. I was already a Christian. I had, I had a, a, a array. Then when I had that, in, that bad dream, I destroyed my altars and then God saved me again from getting killed. And then, I started reading the Bible. I started praying in Jesus' name. I prayed a hedge of protection over myself, and I got involved, and I'm still here today. And even to show you the pop, I had I had, I had misdiagnosed with cancer about a year ago, and it went unchecked for a whole year, and the cancer didn't ever move from that part of my body. So in theory, the cancer should have spread across my whole body, but it didn't. So I believe that God held that cancer in my body at that time despite me being a sinner and despite me not being a perfect Christian. So I think that's the, that's a testimony of the power of God. It really is. And speaking to somebody who's had a near death experience myself and saw my parents who are gone, my dad who died 11 years ago, 
from pancreatic cancer. My mom, who died five years ago from uh, lupus complications, uh, I had a, I, I had my heart stop for over 90 plus seconds, and I saw my parents. And um, I have guardian angels, and no, I should not be here myself. So speaking as somebody that has gone through situations that you really shouldn't be here, but you are, you're meant to be here. You're meant for bigger things. And, and God bless you, man. I'm glad you are. Could you, yeah, could you do a favor, brother? I, I, so I'm sorry to like kind of switch over from that sentiment into something else. Some people are curious about, could you talk a little bit more specifically about the exact physical features of what uh, the galapote looked like when it changed shape, more detail? All right. It didn't. Bye. All right. Uh, yeah, sorry. My mother was talking to me. But That's it good. basically didn't look like a wolf. Because you might get a little bit of echo because I have to go in the hallway for a second. I hope that's all right. That's all right. If, you know, on your side, you may be able to go just to let everybody know. If you go into the area where you come in at the bottom, there's two small pictures of us and there's the three dots. If you go in there, there may be an area where you can click noise cancellation or if you have your settings, it should be able to in your settings. Um, you can you can click noise cancellation, I believe, on my end. Um, echo cancellation has been uh, turned on, but we can still hear you. So go ahead, buddy. Yeah, um, I'll repeat it because I, I went to the hallway. But I'll repeat it if you can't hear me too good. After I come back upstairs, yeah. I have to open the door for my sister. Um, uh, basically, it didn't, it, it looked more dog, it looked more dog like than actual wolf because let me know there are no actual wolves in the NDR in the Dominican Republic, so it makes sense why they can't turn into a wolf because there's not actual wolves there. Um, also, it, 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 it had a snout like, like, a, like a dog, it grew whiskers, hair started growing out of his face. But it still, it still looked human. What I mean, like it still had its human skin. It didn't. His his hair didn't fully turn into a wolf. It was a, it was like an amalgamation of of both things. If anyone's ever seen the movie Sleepwalkers by Stephen King, uh, about the cat people, about the cat people. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. So he's gonna. We'll let him uh, let him deal with that for a second. He has uh, family members that are uh, leaving. So, hey, brother, can you hear me? Yep, we're here. Yeah. So, if anyone seen the movie Sleepwalkers? Um, uh, it's about like these cat people. They're not dogs, but there's a scene where he's driving and he he changes his face like through his things but still yeah. has a skin tone. Imagine that, but with dog features and it's slightly more hair. See, we lost him there for a second. You still there, brother? Maybe where he's at, he is in a, in a bad spot. We'll give him a, a second there to pop back in. I'm sure he will. My internet is full. He is popping back in under something else that must be another phone. Hold on one second. Hey brother, hey, brother. let me let me remove there you go. Okay, you're good. Can I hear yeah, you? Yeah, I don't know what happened, probably you know. I, yeah, you, you I can hear you. All right, go right ahead. Yeah, you know, the, okay. these things normally these, these things normally happen when you share these kind of details in stories. Exactly. They do. I got you kicked out. Know. I don't know what happened. Funny, it's funny you bring that up. That has been happening in all of my uh, subscribers and people that have been to my, uh, my regular um, live streams and the town hall sessions lately. They have been happening like crazy. And I'll jump into 
lights and fire fear, Matt, ask him if he thinks there is a way to kill these werewolves since we're talking about. Um, to be honest, I don't know any like supernatural, like silver bullet ways to kill them, but I believe they could get killed just like anything could get killed, at least the ones I'm referring to, you know. Uh, and uh, at least the ones that I know about, Galipotes, they don't really, they could kill you and eat you or whatever, but they normally transform in order to do some kind of devious mischief work. You know, you know what I mean? I understand. But uh, yeah, because I, I, I've heard stories of even, you know, flying witches <laughs> getting shot with a shotgun and, and they fall down, you know? Uh, and also, you got to remember that there's different levels of of Galipotes and witches, you know? It's like ranks, like in Satanism, you know? There's different ranks and also right. different sacrifices. The different sacrifices allow you to transform into different things, you know? So who's to say if, if you use an amateur amateur Galipote who has gotten into the business compared to who's like a 20 year veteran who could turn in because because it's not just only dogs they could turn into they could turn into practically anything i've heard of bulls goats uh wow. and also uh there's other things that this this doesn't relate to Galipote but more into the voodoo things that they could turn you into an animal and then and then sell you off and people kill you and eat you thinking you're an animal because because they basically sold you as an animal Wow, that's insane. No, that's real big. Um, um, uh, that's real big in Haiti, because uh, a lot of you know how they say um, uh, you have to give up something or, or a family member. People in 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 Haiti and DR, what they do is that they they call it. Oh, I'll sell you a soul, but you're only allowed to sell the soul of someone who's who's in your family. So I guess that's I guess maybe a parent has a legal right to like sell. The, the, the family member's soul, or you could also sell the soul of someone who wronged you, but you can't just sell somebody's soul for anything. It has to be either related to you or someone caused you some kind of harm for you to have a legal right in order to harm them back. Got you. And since you're on that right now, Lyson is doing a great job tonight, by the way, brother, asking questions. Same as, so they manipulate the shape of their humans at well at will so if they're able to to do that to a human to you know make them cattle basically for someone to take and and eat and for them to dispatch and get rid of a problem maker or so you know someone like that so they have the ability to even do that that's a lot of power that they're dealing with yeah, because remember, I said, like you said, a Galipote is not just a person who made a pack who transformed. This is also who, someone who also has occult knowledge to do other things. Uh, and, um, and these people are not easy to find. You know, you, you, you have to know someone to know someone, and they normally live in rural areas, you know. I and was things. just going to ask you uh, that. It's funny you brought that up. I was going to say, how did you go about, you don't obviously have to give us specific specific but how did you go about even trying to find one of them like i said i wanted i what i really wanted was something kind of innocent i just wanted uh an authentic reading from someone of that particular culture just to get you know their opinion about something i, I, I wasn't looking you know, to become a godly or do some black magic work or whatever. I just fell into my lap. Like the same way you might go to a gypsy to get a tarot reading. Because there, even though someone else could give you a tarot reading, you might want to go to a gypsy because, you know, gypsies are famous for tarot reading. Real quick, just to let you know, Lights and Fire Fear said this, wanted you to know, Matt, I'm having the knowledge of my life He's learning a ton. I, I want you to tell Brother Heck, I'm so grateful for him to share this. So Lyson Fire Fear, who is one of our, our uh, regular uh, supporters here, is very grateful to you for sharing this. Yeah, you're lagging a little bit on my end, brother, but that's probably because of my connection. One of, one of our, one of our uh, supporters, Lice and Fire Fear, would just wanted me to tell you how grateful he is of everything you're telling us, that he's learning a ton. 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I appreciate I appreciate the compliment because these are things that aren't really shared on American YouTube. But if you type in this exact word and you're able to speak Spanish, they have tons of videos and stuff. So this isn't like knowledge that people don't know. It's just that American people don't know. So somebody else asked the uh, Sogna. Let's see if I can say this. Sogno D'Angeli uh, asked. Does the soul have to be pure one or a corrupt one? Obviously, yours had a pure soul, you know, so I guess it really doesn't matter. It's just up to the El Galapote if they want to do it. If she's referring to becoming one of these creatures, you would have to have a corrupt one because, no, because you know, I you have to. I think what she meant is how they said you had a pure soul and you had gone there for help, does it matter if your soul is not pure? Well, I believe, you know, if you go with the intention of doing something, intention is everything. So just for the fact that I wanted to dabble in it, gave them enough legal right to, to affect my life. And I opened some kind of door, you know, but like you said, he didn't say I had a good soul. He said I had a good heart, but you can say I have a good, oh, a good soul. But I guess they, even they have to, even they have to, like, even they have to acknowledge, you know, acknowledge you in some way. Because because remember, because remember, I was I was baptized before this, but he wasn't going to mention Christ to me, obviously. So she just added, as the sacrifice, do you have to be pure or or tainted? It has to be something that. Causes you. I'm also share another another secret. Sometimes when you go to do a sacrifice for said thing, not only to be a galipote, just for anything, for money or whatever, the, the the voodoo doctor will tell you, "Oh, I want you to bring me a chick, a chick being a small pigeon, a small a small chicken." Or he might tell you, "Oh, I want you to bring me a rooster, or I want you to bring me a chicken." And and you and you hand in, and you hand in this animal and you think that's all you think, but what you don't know is that that chick, it means your youngest kid, or that rooster means your father, or that chicken could mean your mother. If they ask you for a whole cow, that could mean your whole family. Yeah. So just like Jesus, just like Jesus spoke in parables, sometimes devils also speak in parables. <laughs> because they, because if they tell you I want you to kill your mother, they know that you're not gonna do it. But they don't have to right. flat out tell you that. They just, they have to tell you bring me a chick, and if you bring your chick, that means that your youngest kid is gonna die. You bring uh, a rooster, that means it's gonna be a male person. If you bring it, if you bring a cow, I heard or a bull, that means your whole family. So God forbid you did that. And this is common. Now, I don't say not so common, but this is now at the testimonies of people who have done this. This is some things that people that these demons do. Ah, I see. OK, well, I'm going to do two quick questions here. So Masochist Mouse said that they did see one of them run away. And their question to you was, why would a shapeshifter reveal themselves to a random person and run away, do you think? And then after that, I have another question. Well, I was in a place where I was in their, in their ground. I was in the middle of nowhere. So it, was, it wasn't like he revealed himself to me in the hotel lobby. He did it in a place, in a, in a place that was his domain. No, and if I told someone a bit, person actually had one do it to them they're curious oh. what your opinion is why they would show themselves to them masochist mouse said one showed themselves to them and then ran away why do you think they would do that i think a lot of these creatures they get off in scaring you um like it's, it, it, it's like a, it, it, it's like a thrill for them and Let's be honest. If if someone says, "Oh, I saw a shapeshifter or a galipote," who's really gonna believe them? So I agree. their word, like even if they know the person, like no one's gonna believe them. I so, they, they really have no loss. Yeah, and then Lyson asked another question. In your opinion, how many of these shapeshifters do you think are in Spain? I mean, obviously, you have no idea how many there could be, but. Do, do, I mean, do you have a, a guesstimate, like hundreds, thousands? 
to be honest, uh, I can't speak of Alipotes, but I do know there are, are a lot of Dominicans who practice the occult in Spain. So there's probably a handful of them around, you know? Uh, I don't think, well, I don't know, but I don't think they're out there and they causing havoc or anything. Right. Uh, but uh, but uh, I do, there's probably a good, I would say 50 to 100 probably of people who are able to do it. Not that they may do it, but because because just because you're able to do it doesn't mean that you do it all, all the time. Because like I said, it, it takes something out of you when you do it. So uh, Griffin2026 is asking, is it, equi is it equivalent exchange sort of thing that was going on? Or is this just some kind of deal that you can strike up in general? Well, you make the pact with said demon, but every time you transform, dep depending, it takes either years off your life or months off your life. But from what the gather, the, the knowledge I've gathered is that they consistently have to renew their pact. So it's not a one-time thing kind of, one-time deal kind of thing. So they probably have to sacrifice multiple people throughout their lives in order to maintain a certain level of power as opposed to if they just sacrifice one person, they only have a set number of times they could do this. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, like the same thing that a lot of people say, if you sell your soul to the devil, you only have like a couple of years to, to enjoy it. It's kind of like, I guess, a similar thing. Ah, I see. Was there, you had mentioned um, the the story that was dealing with your father and your family that you could go a little deeper into it. Um, was there anything else that you can share uh, in your in your past that, you know, maybe kind of, you know, toes the line in this realm of, of high strangeness that you could share with us? Yeah, um, I shared this story on a different platform as well. Well, I didn't share me saying it, but someone read it. Um, I, when, when uh, I was a kid, I had a lot of sleep paralysis and old hags. You ever seen an old hag, like a scary old lady? I, I would see I her old, in uh, my dreams. Yeah. I, was, I would see her in my dreams. And what she would do is I would fall asleep watching TV and my dream would start as me watching TV. So I had no knowledge that I was actually asleep. And then what happened was she would take me and she would drag me under the bed and like torture me. She would like put her hand inside my body. And like I could physically feel her hand. It felt like a real strong vibrational feel. And this happened for years and years. And then I would even see this. I would even see this entity when I was awake. And when I would scream and point at it. And by the time my mother looked around, it would it would go away. So it would make me look like I was crazy. Wow. So that was actually my first paranormal experience. How old were you? I was like five through oh, like eight. But it could have it could have happened before five, but I don't remember past five. That's a lot for a, a child to go through. I mean, just you know, speaking for what I went through with three of my friends at age 14 was way beyond what, what, you know, we, we were able to handle even to this day. I can't imagine you being able to, to do that. Um, and yes, Slice and Fire Fear says that old hag sure had her way of making dreams seem not dreams. I can't tell you the number of people that have written me uh, with, with experiences talking about the old hag and the hat man, uh, the shadow man in the in the corners of the room. You had I, made I also saw the hat. I, I also saw the hat man once too. I was just going to ask you when you and I spoke for the first time. You told me you had seen him. Could you let everybody know about that? Yeah, uh, mine was kind of odd. Um, it's kind of sounding funny. I was I was going to my grandmother's room where I live. And I saw the old hag sitting down on the toilet with the lights off. And I looked at her, she looked at me. And then when I turned around and looked back, there was a big shadow behind me with a hat. And it had, it had a white and black eyes, almost like a cartoon. Ever seen the show, ever seen the movie, The, 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 the Shadow? Yes. So it looked like uh, the the uh, the shadow that old 1995 movie. It was like it, it would be black, but you could still see his eyes. So it was like a big black figure who was tall, 
mind you, I was five. So to me, probably anything was tall, but it was tall enough for me to consider tall. And when I, I, when I looked up, his eyes looked down and met mine. And it was right behind me. And the old hag was right in the, the left of the bathroom. And I slowly turned around and walked away. And then that was it. And mind you, this was like at 8 p.m. And there was people in my house. But I, I wouldn't tell them, oh, I saw the hat man and the old hag in the bathroom because they wouldn't believe me. That is, is that just the fact? And nobody saw them but you. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, uh, there was no one around. Sometimes these things will present themselves only being me around, but they're the only one that saw the old hag. So it wasn't just a figment of my imagination. One time, my sister also saw it, saw it at the same time. But this hat man situation and the old hag, the, the, the hat man thing, I don't care, to be honest. I was very confused on anything. Very good point, Rai Voss from Code, I guess Codex of Curiosity makes a great point. Just heard the sleep paralysis is not waking life, but the demons manipulating your pineal gland, making it seem so real. There will be one thing that is out of place. Everything else will be the same. Uh, that that right there is crazy. And then uh, Lice and Fire Fear uh, makes, and that's not the right comment. Um, let me hold on. Let me go back up. I got to go back up, Lyson. Give me one second because I want that up. Uh, and we lost him for a second. And Lyson says, always say what you saw, no matter if they believe it. I don't care if you're a child, you're an adult. Uh, I can't tell. I'm back, guys. Sorry, this keeps kicking me off. Yeah. I was actually reading a comment by Lice, and they say, always say what you saw, no matter if they believe. Uh, I can't tell you how many people over the years did not believe what me and my three friends saw. Uh, children need to speak up. Adults, uh, teenagers, I can't tell you the hundreds of people that have now told me, because just from me telling my experience, and somebody having the bravery or, or sick of hiding that that truth and not telling everyone what it does for you and able to get that off your chest and let other people know also that there really are these types of things out there, that these things really do exist. And the more that we talk about it, the more that we're all learning and we're able to help each other. I mean, the fact that you're helping us today, uh, Brother Hack, is, is just you know, priceless, you know, just Lyson himself, um, you know, is learning a ton, but, you know, and we lost him again. Um, but just the fact, you know, that you're helping us today, Brother Heck is teaching everybody so much from different parts of the world. And uh, we just want to thank you too for everything that you've told us today. Yeah, I know. This keeps, this kept get, knocking me off. And this never happens. But now I should be good because now I'm alone in the house and I'm I'm, I'm on the Wi-Fi, and uh, with with the help of Jesus, we should be good now. That's okay. Uh, anybody? Uh, I just wanted to say real quick, we have more people jumping in. If if uh, anybody has any questions, like everyone keeps saying on all the other shows, uh, throw it in chat. If you have a question. Um, if you wanted to add maybe something to our discussion tonight, uh, uh, hello, Burning Sands Exploration. I, I've never met you before. Welcome. Um, just to also let everybody know for the second time, um, Hector has cancer, um, and we are flashing his GoFundMe, uh, uh, sharing uh, his GoFundMe up on the screen. Uh, Coral Pros also has thrown that up in the chat. So if you guys are capable of helping Hector, he's been very sick and anything would help him. If you cannot help him financially, just send your prayers and your goodwill. I can't tell you just, you know, people that have sent theirs to me with all my health problems lately and every bit of it works no matter what. So, uh, you know, God bless you, man. We, we wish you nothing but the best and, and to stay healthy. Yeah, I also wanted to share another tidbit. You know how I went to see a witch doctor. 
a, a, a witch doctor in in in, uh, in DR. I had a cousin that he want to see a witch doctor, but in Haiti, and in Haiti is different. In Haiti, they don't have a real. They don't actually lie to you. They're like, you want to go and make a deal with the devil? We'll take you, and you actually go to a cave and you meet the actual devil and you make the deal with him directly. Oh, okay. And um, uh, his his story, I'll, I'll paraphrase it because now my story. But I can tell yeah. you, he uh he was pessimistic like me, so he's like, what devil? Ain't no devil here. He's thinking it's probably a guy in a cave hiding his face or whatever. And he's telling the guy, oh, and, and he has an interpreter, and and uh, basically um uh, uh the, the the actual devil is talking in in Haitian. Uh, but he has the but his ability to talk in Spanish. But he's so the sole interpreter is talking on the Haitian um uh, um uh, to said devil, and 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 my because my cousin wanted to make a a deal for he wanted he wanted some so uh, he um, um he wanted to play uh the the, the jackpot and he wanted um uh, this is some some uh what do you call it he wanted the correct uh thing to the jackpot to win it. And okay. that deal, and that deal, what it is, is that it's not a blood sacrifice. Even though the devil wants really wants a blood sacrifice, the deal is that if you win a certain mo a money, you you gotta you gotta you gotta pay a portion of said of said money back to the devil, whatever. But the, the but the, the devil didn't want to take that deal. He wanted blood, but my, but my cousin didn't want to give anybody for blood. Uh, but prior to that. He asked the guy, "Oh, if he's the devil, I want to see. I want to see him. I want to see how he looks like." And, and the and the witch doctor is telling him, "No, no, 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 no. The, 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 don't do that." And he's like, "No, I want to see it." And, and, and the devil is like in Spanish, "Oh, you really want to see me?" He says, "Yeah." And he tells me that there was lights, there was candles, like all flickering, and, and then like at the speed of sound, like sonically, this entity was in was in front of him, all covered in hair. And he put his 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 hand of talons on his shoulder and gripped it. He, 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 he's like, you wanted to see me, right? And my and my and my cousin didn't look up to see his face. He saw a big, giant, hairy hand of an entity that was eight, nine feet tall. And the and and my, my and my cousin was like, oh, cry. no, no, it's all right. I believe you. I, I don't want to see you anymore. And then the devil went back into the dark area, and all the and all the candles they lit back up. Oh my God! And this, and this is then they have certain kind of caves in Haiti. They might have them in DR too, but I know in Haiti specifically they have certain kind of caves where these demons live, or at least, at least, at least they occupy them and they appear to you in the flesh. Hey, Ryan, uh, boss, had actually mentioned that he was going to talk to you uh, later about. The TikTok video. Do you have a TikTok video? Yeah, I have a TikTok account called Hectech Seven One Eight, where I share my cancer things. But I, my boss is gonna, I think, help me so I can make an updated video about it. I think and, that's what he's referring to. Okay, well, just to let you know, of course, I'll do the same thing so that when it's updated, I will put it on my channel. I'll put it in my community post, and I'll make sure it gets put all over everything for you as well. Yeah, make sure and, get that to me. and also these these in in, in third work in third world countries, the occult and magic is a part of life. So that's why you don't see it as openly here. But in, in my country and in Haiti, this is like an everyday occurrence. So it's not that far fetched when people hear this kind of stuff in my country. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, well, I think people and what's up, JC, um, uh, you know, people are definitely not where they were even a decade ago here in the United States. Uh, minds have opened up, the veil is being lifted, uh, and people are learning a lot more because of people like you, me, and the others here. Uh, Lyson, go right ahead, my friend. You you ask away and I'll ask him. He, he has one more question. Uh, Madeline Chap is asking, uh, so did you see the face of this being that you just spoke of? Uh, of the one that I mentioned on my cousin or, or yeah. the one I saw? Yeah. No, I, I'm just telling you a secondhand occurrence of my cousin saw. And that um, he, and he didn't see the face because he was too scared to look up. 
Oh, so I don't know yeah. if it was a dog man, a Bigfoot kind of creature, yeah, but I don't blame him. If you see a, a ten foot tall creature that you antagonized, and he has his hand on your shoulder, you know, I I, I think yeah. anybody would do the same. Uh, yeah, and being someone that was six five to six feet from a uh, uh, eleven twelve foot dog man, I can attest to that feeling. So definitely. Um, Lyson, if you will retype that question, um, I, I didn't see it, and I will ask him for you. Um, so if you could throw that up real quick, and the next thing I see up on the screen from you, I will ask him your question. There's, a, there's also, there's also a, a different kind of uh, entity I want to talk about that a lot of people aren't aware of. It's called uh, Habaka, B-A-K-A, -A. and this is the entity where you actually buy buy this entity and they prepare it different kind of ways and what they do is for example they take like a chicken or something and they and they put certain things in it and what this entity does that it, it, it would guard uh your fields or your place of business and if a person goes into your field it, um, uh, um, uh, he can't find his way out until the owner until the until, uh, until the owner comes and gets him oh okay and, and the baka would appear and like would chase him around and torture him. And there's even been some cases where a baka has attacked people and killed them. And also, what could happen too is that a baka is only for a certain uh, a contract. So what could happen too sometimes if you, if you buy a baka and, and the owner dies, the, the baka is now free and it's not chained up anymore to the said location. And now it's just wandering around the countryside, just causing havoc. Ah, and normally, and, and normally, and normally, you, you know what a baka is because you can hear chains. You can hear chains, but you can't see chains. So there's like a, a folklore that you hear chains outside your house. Don't look out the window. It's probably a baka that's walking around. I got you. And and real quick, hello, 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 Nellie Turner. She wanted to say hello to me and you, brother Hack, and everyone else. Hey, Nellie, how are you doing? Um. So, Lyson, uh, we did not see the last question that you typed. We're still uh, waiting for that to pop up. Um, the the one entity, can you uh, remind me, Brother Hex, the one that, that separates itself at the waist, the top flies away to kill people. You can pour salt in it to kill it when it comes back to go back together. What is that called? Oh. Maybe Oh, um, can. Uh, um, um, can you repeat that? It's it's an entity named Rye. If you're still here, listen. Um, it, it's an entity in, in, in that basically has wings. I think it's usually a woman. It will separate. Uh, okay, yeah, at the waist and the top flies away, and you can. Pour yeah, I, I've heard that's that's uh, I've heard that that also occurs in my country, but I've normally heard that in in, in Mexican folklore, they're like a witches that fly around in balls of balls of fire, and they and they and they take the, they take their legs off, and um uh, they they leave them somewhere. You know, heck, actually, Smurfy corrected. It's in a swing. You're right. You're right, uh, Smurfy. Thank you. And a swing is the one that I was referring to, but I have heard uh, the Achusa that you're mentioning too. Um, yeah, in, uh, in, in my country, the the witches, the brujas, what they do is that they take off their skin and leave it, and they go around and fly around skinless. And if you find their skin and put salt in it, they can't get back in their skin and they die. Okay, now Rye is saying the Achusa is the owl woman and i've heard of the owl woman too the one i am referring to everybody is uh and and i see you right there lyson it's the it's a being that's usually a woman it will separate itself at the waist the top will fly away it's almost like a, a vampire to go find men uh and, and uh suck the blood and while the bottom half is still left wherever it is. You can the the uh, saying goes, you can pour salt into the inside of what's left, into the bowels and the stomach of the creature. And when it goes and it puts itself back together, it will die from the salt. That's the being I'm speaking about. Um, but Lyson finally uh, typed out 
um, the, the final question. He said, do you think that these creatures are demons or spirits living among, living among and using their powers, showing themselves as shapeshifters, or are they just humans cursed with powers? I believe that, like in the days of old, the the, the Nephilim, like like that the uh, the fallen angels sinned against uh, man and beast. I believe they're doing something similar, where they're they're causing you to make a a, a real dire sin to to gain legal entry into your body. So you're infused with some kind of demonic blood DNA that's in, that enables you to transform because I don't believe you could transform just no matter how much power you think you have. You have to have some kind of demonic influence order to help you on with the process. That's why they require you as a blood sacrifice to all these things because they want to damn your soul. And then uh, also I believe once you do that, you're not uh, you can't get saved because technically salvation is for humans. Now you're beyond human. You're not even, you're a Nephilim in other words. That's just my theory. I got you. I got you. I think, I think Rye said he was leaving. Rye, if you're leaving, I, that's just the, they, that's the idea I think I'm seeing. If you're leaving brother, thanks for stopping. Um, Let's see what else, if we have any other comments here. Um, and license said, yep, exactly. Heck, I think just like that. Um, let's see. No more questions as of right now. Um, thank you, Twirl Pros. Is there anything else, uh, brother? Heck, that you can think of that maybe some, even maybe something that didn't happen to you, maybe that happened to family member or or uh, friends. That that is something worth, uh, you know, mentioning here. Um, I've had a, a cousin tell me that she had an unbaptized child that she think a bruja was trying to uh, suck on her baby. Uh, because um, she felt something on top of her roof or whatever. And um, uh, she had to get like uh, her child baptized and, and get a, like a cleansing order for this bruja to stop, stop showing around. Because these brujas come and they like suck your, the kid's blood or whatever. And she told me she saw like, you know, old hag kind of lady. And they have the, in the, the brujas in DR, they have these lights, one light, it it comes out of their their mouth, one out of their eyes, and the other out of their private parts. Not to get graphic, but these because because they, they're because, because they're normally naked when they fly around. They don't have clothes, right. uh, and and this is a way for them to actually is has a practical sense in order for them to see and things. Um, Rye Voss from Codega's Code, Codex of Curiosity said orbs in Mexico are said to be brujas, like Brother Heck said. And then there was a question Linda Arrington had said, is the person who had that happen to them, are they still having demonic problems? If she's referring to my cousin, I don't believe so. I think she hand, handled the situation before it got too out of hand. Good, good. Lice and fire fear uh, because of everything I said. Uh, wanted, wanted me to tell you, brother Heck, he's very grateful. This was the craziest live stream. Thanks to him and you, Matt, at Planet 412. You're welcome, man. I'm glad that I could, uh, could help put together uh, one of the craziest ones ever. I, I, I think Brother Heck has done an amazing job. You know, I, I want to mention this real quick. Brother, you've, you've been a, a, a very big supporter of Planet 412, and you've uh, been around for a while, and you and I have been talking, you know, for – for about a month or two now about you coming on and being a guest. And uh, we finally, you know, because of my health, I was able to finally get you uh, nailed down and, and uh, so to speak, and got you on. So I'm uh, very happy that you got to tell this for the first time here. Yeah, this is, this is normally does not really told on uh, English speaking YouTube, but uh, a lot of people don't know that like a lot of uh, Spanish speaking paranormal channels are really big in Latin America and this topic uh, pops up all the time in uh, 
in Mexico, they call them <laughs> Nahuales, which is also a shapeshifter, but of a, a Mexican origin. They have a lot of stories about that. If you if you go if YouTube if YouTube Galipote, there's a lot of stories um, in Spanish about occurrences about Galipotes. Uh, so yeah, it's basically just like the 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 Dominican version of a skinwalker. Is that in all parts of the world they have different names, but they're mostly the same gist. Got to have a blood sacrifice, being the occult, you know. Just different ways about going about it. I got you. Is there, uh, and I know I keep throwing stuff at you. I mean, since we got you here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna utilize you as much, uh, you know, that I can. Is there anything else that you can think of, uh, possibly that maybe you know a crazy story that you haven't thought of yet that they might want to hear? Um, at the top of my mind, though. Um, not not particularly because i don't want to you know just say random stories that aren't, aren't true I, I just told the story that occurred to me you know because i hear a lot of I, I hear a lot of channels and oh yeah I, I shot a dog man with a with a 50 cal pistol and a rake chased me or whatever you know at least i'm being honest i saw i saw what i saw <laughs> you know and that's where i am with that you know if something truly happened to you Tell, tell what really happened. Please don't don't add. You know, I, I say it's, it's you know, it's the type of content that makes you kind of just put your hand over your head and you're like, oh, geez, I, I can't listen. I can't tell you how many of those I've heard. But yours has been absolutely phenomenal. It's It's been horrifying. Uh, I, I want to thank you for everybody here. You know, we've been on for an hour and a half uh, and, and you have given us just a look into another part of the planet that we don't get to see much. Let's be honest, everybody uh, over here in, in the States. And he really gave us a heck of a show. Um, I wanted to, to thank you very much uh, for any, I agree. Uh, Matt, Matt, Matty, uh, he gave us incredible experiences and um, you know, I, I just want to make sure again, that everybody is aware that Brother Heck has been fighting cancer for how many years now? About a year. He's been fighting it for a year. Do, do you mind? I mean, do you you don't have to mention what type if you don't want? No, I I, I had a I have a lymphoma, uh, non Hodgkin's B B cell. Mm -hmm. I have it in my left groin, which is like the thigh area of my leg. Thankfully, it's only in that area, and the tumor has gone down significantly. I finished seven seven rounds of chemo, and now I'm undergoing uh, radiation for like a month. Well, well, God bless you, and good luck. And you, I know everybody here. You have their prayers. Everybody has GoFundMe has been going in the chat. It's been going on the ticker. Um, as you heard me say, you know, a Rye is going to be helping uh, Brother Heck put together a TikTok video for him and GoFundMe. I will be happily put that on everything that I have when it's finished. I want to thank everybody for coming here. Um, you know, Brother Heck, thank you, bro, for coming here. And uh, I, I just, uh, if there's anything you want to say to everybody before you uh, head to the green room, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your prayers and things. And I just wanted to shed light that these beings actually do exist. And if you go looking for them, you will find them. So be careful what you wish for. Agreed, everyone. All right, brother. Thank you. I will see you in the green room after the show. Thanks again. All right. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everybody. I wanted to thank all of you for that. Uh, he did a great job, didn't he? Uh, he's been a oh, thank you, Tammy. Very much, Truth Walker. Um, that is so appreciated. Um, you know, I, I, I've been praying a lot. Um, especially over the weekend, you know, there's a lot of, of negative stuff going on uh, with with my equipment, uh, you know, and I, I'm not going to get into specifics, but I, I've been praying, you know, please, God, please help me out here. Tammy, you, you are a supporter like no other. Uh, she was ND Southpaw, everybody. He is now Truth Walker, and I love uh, Truth Walker is much more appropriate. If you find it in your heart to help me and get some new equipment, it would be appreciated, everybody. I'm just trying to better the show. 
That's all I'm going to say about it. If, you, if anything, just say a prayer for me to help me get this under control. I just want to get these computer issues gone. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I, I'm so happy to see the faces uh, that I'm seeing here, uh, faces I've never seen before and other faces I don't get to see often. Um, thank you to, you know, uh, my wife, Stacy for moderating, Truth Walker, Tammy. Uh, she helped Rye Voss and JC. Uh, they also helped uh, Maddie. You basically were like a moderator tonight, too. So thank you. And uh, can I make up a, a group chat for you? Um, I will do what uh, I can. I, I, let me see. Um, I will. Do I do that? I'll tell you what. I'll figure it out. I will do this at the very least. Um, let me see. I will. I will make sure it gets set up. Thank you, uh, Sogno D'Angeli. You've been a sweetheart tonight. I'll get it. At the very least, what I'll do, everybody, is I will, in my group on Facebook, I'll get something set up. And I will try to get it set up here in the green room afterwards so you guys can chat. Uh, I don't know how to do that, but I'll ask my buddies that do. To everybody that was here tonight, thank you. Hey, you guys made this a really good night. It turned out really good. Um, if you could join my Patreon, as I said, we had a brand new member today, the first one ever on Plan 412, uh, Pamela Stefanich. I don't want to mess that up. Pamela Stefanich, first Patreon member, Planet 412. Tammy Truthwalker, she's level three since the beginning. Um, thank you to everybody, all of my members, to everybody that came. Uh, you guys have a great weekend. Oh, thank you, Madeline. Uh, Maddie Chap, uh, just thank you. I agree. It was a good show. I had a great time tonight. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot. I really did. I don't want to keep bringing out, but I'm not. Somebody is going to be generous to me. I'm going to point out the fact that you're being uh, generous to me. So I'll take this last opportunity. Uh, if you go to Planet 412, if you guys haven't, we had at least 70 people here. Uh, if you did not click the like button before you check on out of here, do it for me, please. Let's as many people come, that should be the first thing you do for anybody's live stream. It helps us big time. Um, subscribe to me. I really would love to have you and earn your, your uh, you know, your honor of being, you know, your host. I know there's a lot out there. I'm working hard. We have brand new stuff coming, really cool stuff that's getting ready to start. Uh, we have the, the Patreon that's new. I'm trying to get people over there, but we have our members as well. We had new emojis tonight. Um, so we're going to say goodnight, everybody. Thanks again. Um, I love every one of you guys. I really do. And thank you for being here. Have a good night, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it greatly helps out the channel. I'll see you next time on Planet 412.